What if I told you there's a car that never needs charging, never needs gas, and literally pulls its power straight out of the air? Sounds impossible, right? Well, while Tesla and China are staying suspiciously quiet, one Zimbabwean inventor claims he's already made it happen. Meet the Maverick, Maxwell's story. Maxwell Chikumbuzo isn't your typical inventor with lab coats, shiny degrees, and stacks of research grants behind him. He's a self-taught engineer from Harare, Zimbabwe, who dropped out of school at just 14. No fancy textbooks, no elite mentorship programs, just an endless curiosity for how the world works, and a stubborn determination to fix its problems. From a young age, Maxwell was obsessed with energy. While most kids his age were worried about music or football, he was busy asking why electricity had to be so expensive, why blackouts were a normal part of life, and whether there could be a way to power things without relying on traditional grids. That curiosity turned into experiments, and those experiments turned into inventions that nobody expected from a high school dropout. One of his early breakthroughs was a television that didn't need to be plugged in. Instead, it ran off radio frequencies floating invisibly in the air around us. It sounded like science fiction, but Maxwell insisted it was real, and he showed it in action. The TV wasn't built from scratch, it was a regular set with a revolutionary system powering it. That's Maxwell's style. He doesn't try to reinvent devices. Instead, he creates a self-charging backbone that can integrate into anything cars, appliances, even household electronics. To him, it's not about building flashy gadgets. It's about flipping the script on how we think energy should work. And in that mission, he's positioning himself not just as an African innovator, but as a man with an idea that could challenge the entire global energy model. The impossible machine, a car that powers itself. Of all Maxwell's claims, none is more jaw-dropping than his so-called self-powering electric car. Forget range anxiety, forget charging stations, forget stopping at gas pumps. This is a machine, he says, that literally powers itself as it drives. At the heart of it is something he calls the micro-energy device, or MED. He says he invented it back in 2009, and while the name sounds simple, what it supposedly does is anything but. The MED is designed to capture radio frequencies, the same kind that bounce invisibly through the air for radios, cell phones, and wireless signals, and somehow convert those tiny signals, measured in nanovolts, into usable energy strong enough to run a vehicle. Now, here's the kicker. By conventional science, that shouldn't be possible. The laws of thermodynamics basically laugh at this idea, saying energy can't just be pulled out of thin air, multiplied, and turned into endless motion. But Maxwell swears that's exactly what his system does. He claims that 70% of the MED's components were custom designed to make this energy transformation feasible, essentially turning what should be background noise into raw, useful power. If that's true, it changes everything. No more charging stations, no more lithium mines, no more reliance on power grids or fossil fuels. One car could drive forever, powered only by invisible waves in the atmosphere. It sounds like something that would be locked inside a Marvel movie script, but Maxwell's story has forced scientists, engineers, and even government officials to stop and ask, is he really on to something? Or is this just smoke and mirrors? Either way, the world is paying attention. Because if it works, it's not just an innovation. It's a total rewrite of science itself. Danger, silence, and suppression. But with game-changing claims come equally dangerous consequences. Maxwell's journey hasn't been the smooth road of a celebrated genius, it's been riddled with tragedy and shadowy resistance. Back in 2017, he and his close friend, Dr. Teddy, were allegedly poisoned. Maxwell barely survived, but Teddy didn't make it. It's a detail Maxwell himself has spoken about. And whether you believe the conspiracy angle or not, it paints a picture of just how dangerous pushing disruptive technology can be. Since then, the threats haven't stopped. He's received warnings, alleged death threats, and countless attempts to either silence him or buy him out. And while industries and investors have certainly shown interest, some even offering millions of dollars, mainstream institutions remain eerily quiet. No flashy headlines from Tesla, no official statements from China, no big validation from energy conglomerates, just silence. That silence is almost as suspicious as the technology itself. Because think about it. If Maxwell is wrong, why not just debunk him loudly and move on? 
but if he's right, then his invention isn't just a threat to Tesla's empire or China's battery industry. It's a threat to oil, to energy monopolies, and to the financial systems built on controlling how the world powers itself. For Maxwell, this means validation is almost impossible. Skepticism surrounds him. Danger follows him. Yet his story refuses to die. Because when an idea promises to break the rules of the game, it doesn't just get ignored. It becomes something that powerful people either want silenced or quietly watched. Giants on edge, Tesla, China, and the oil industry. If you really want to measure the weight of Maxwell's invention, don't just listen to what he says, look at who isn't talking. Tesla, China, and the global oil industry. Three giants that rarely agree on anything, suddenly all sitting in the same uneasy silence. Let's start with Tesla. Elon Musk's entire empire is built on a very specific roadmap. Batteries, charging infrastructure, and solar integration. That's the backbone of everything Tesla does, from the cars themselves to the power wall in your garage to entire solar neighborhoods powered by battery storage. But Maxwell's system doesn't need batteries in the same way. It doesn't need fast charging networks, or sprawling solar setups, or superchargers on every highway. If cars can literally pull energy from thin air while driving, then Tesla's vision of an electrified future built on hardware-heavy charging systems starts to look a lot less futuristic. Now shift your gaze to China. They don't just play the EV game. They own the field. The country produces more batteries than the rest of the world combined. Billions of dollars in lithium supply chains, gigafactories, and mineral mining are at stake. If self-charging vehicles became a reality, the demand for those batteries would plummet. And with it, China's dominance in the EV market. And then of course, there's oil, the trillion dollar titan that fuels our planes, trucks, and power stations. Oil has been fighting a losing battle against renewable energy already. But a vehicle that needs no fuel, no charging, and no grid at all? That's checkmate. So when one man in Zimbabwe claims to have built a machine that could disrupt all three industries at once, you can understand why the silence is deafening. One African inventor is at least on paper threatening the foundations of three of the most powerful empires on Earth. Between genius and myth, the skeptical lens. Of course, for every jaw-dropping claim, there's a chorus of critics asking the same question. Does it really work? Fact-checkers, skeptics, and industry veterans point to the lack of peer-reviewed evidence. They argue that the cars Maxwell has shown publicly are actually just conventional EVs running on standard lithium-ion batteries, not some groundbreaking energy device. One of the biggest sticking points is patents. Normally, if you invent something world-changing, the first step is to patent it. That protects your idea and opens doors for serious validation. But in Maxwell's case, he says his applications were rejected. Why? Because his system violates natural laws. The patent office claimed his invention defies the laws of thermodynamics, and therefore, cannot be industrially applicable. In other words, even if it works, the rules of science don't currently allow it to be patented. That's the paradox. If the technology works as Maxwell says, it's revolutionary but unpatentable. If it doesn't work, then it's fraud. Either way, the lack of independent testing and documentation only fuels the skepticism. And yet, this gray area is exactly why his story is so magnetic. Science is built on rules, but history shows us those rules sometimes get rewritten. The Wright brothers were mocked for chasing heavier-than-air flight. Early radio pioneers were told long-distance signals were impossible. Today, both are obvious realities. So where does Maxwell fall? Is he rewriting the rulebook, or playing a smoke-and-mirrors game with just enough mystery to keep people guessing? At the moment, the answer sits somewhere in between balanced precariously on that razor-thin line between revolutionary genius and impossible myth. Africa's innovation struggle, beyond one man. While Maxwell's story grabs headlines, it also highlights something bigger. The systemic struggles African innovators face on the global stage. Africa has always been a hotbed of creativity and problem-solving. But too often, its inventors are overlooked underfunded, or outright dismissed. Maxwell himself turned down multi-million dollar offers from American investors who wanted him to relocate. For many, that would have been the golden ticket. Money, labs, recognition. 
but he refused, worried his work would be co-opted, silenced, or buried. Instead, he chose to keep developing in Zimbabwe, even if that meant moving slower and facing more risks. That decision underscores a painful reality. African innovators don't just face the technical hurdles of proving their ideas, they battle intellectual property, barriers that are stacked against them, skepticism from Western institutions, and a lack of infrastructure to support scaling. Even when they succeed, their contributions often get overshadowed by better-funded players in Europe, Asia, or the US. Maxwell frames his work not just as a personal triumph, but as proof of Africa's untapped potential. His inventions, whether they ultimately stand the test of science or not, show the world that disruptive ideas don't have to come from Silicon Valley, Shenzhen, or Berlin. They can come from Harare, Lagos, or Nairobi. And that matters, because his story forces a re-evaluation of where we look for the next big thing. It's not just Maxwell's battle for recognition. It's Africa's battle to prove that genius doesn't need a Western stamp of approval to be real. In that sense, whether his car works exactly as claimed or not, his journey has already started shifting perceptions about innovation, ownership, and who gets to shape the future. The future of energy, disruption or illusion. So where does this leave us? On one hand, reports claim universities and scientific institutions have certified parts of Maxwell's technology, adding legitimacy to his claims. There are even stories of early commercial rollouts, smaller devices being sold, distributors already operating in Zimbabwe, and buyers from across Africa taking an interest. That paints a picture of something real, something moving quietly but steadily toward broader adoption. If true, the implications are staggering. Imagine cars that never need charging, homes powered without grids, and devices running endlessly without plugs or batteries. Energy scarcity could become a relic of the past. Developing nations, especially in Africa, could leapfrog traditional infrastructure entirely, skipping over the need for massive power plants or costly fuel imports. Global geopolitics would shift overnight, as oil-rich nations lose leverage and battery supply chains lose value. But here's the other side. None of this has been independently validated to the level the scientific community demands. Skepticism isn't just stubbornness, it's the foundation of progress. If Maxwell's work turns out to be smoke and mirrors, then the entire story will be remembered as one of the most elaborate tech illusions of our time. And yet, even if it does fall apart, Maxwell's journey still matters. It forces us to widen the lens of innovation, to consider that groundbreaking ideas don't always look polished or come from the right labs. Sometimes, they start with a self-taught dropout in Harare, tinkering with radio waves. So here's the question that lingers. Is this the spark of a new energy era, or just a story too big to believe? And if Tesla and China, the giants with the most to lose, are choosing to stay silent, maybe the real question is, what do they know that we don't?